All right, and welcome back to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. This time around, we're going to be looking at the Dofer A172 module, kind of here in the center. We're going to be talking basics about what this module does, and then going into some demonstrations a little bit later. Uh, so concepts first. Uh, we haven't seen a module like this before, so it's important to kind of talk about what it's doing before we get into some demonstrations of it. Now, it has some inputs here and it has some outputs, so let's talk about what those do. Um, as the name states, it's a maximum and minimum selector, so where is it going to be selecting from? It's going to be selecting from inputs that you give it, so you would have to pipe in at least two to start out with, uh, right here in one of these ports, and uh, you can go up to four different voltages here. Um, you can choose any type of voltage that you want. Uh, which is kind of nice. Uh, you can use low frequency oscillators such as the A147 over here. Um, a little bit further over I have the A145. This produces low frequency uh, voltages as well. You can use things like the A149 that produces random voltages. Um, these are kind of all in the low frequency uh, sort of arena. But uh, you can also use audio rate voltages such as the A111, the A110, or any other audio rate that you might have kind of in your arsenal. Now one uh, kind of interesting thing about this module is that you can actually combine the two types of voltages. So if you wanted to pipe in a CV voltage here into input one and then put in an audio rate voltage here at the bottom or you know any kind of combination therein at those inputs then uh, you could do that and you would get some pretty interesting results now in the case of combining CV voltages and audio rate voltages uh, depending on what you use as it states in the manual if you use uh, something like a sine wave or a saw or even a triangle and you combine that uh, you'll probably get a sound that's similar to a pulse width modulation where you're going to hear clipping at the upper and the lower parts of the waveform. Uh, so that's just kind of a little brief overview of what's going to happen when you combine the two. Now, a little bit later, we'll hear what that sounds like um, and we'll even see some of it because I have some oscilloscope um, presentations here uh, planned for this. Uh, the only other thing that I wanted to mention before we kind of jump right in and do a little bit of demonstration is uh, you have these LEDs here over each of the respective outputs. And you'll notice if you look closely there that uh, there's a little minus symbol and a plus symbol. So what those are going to do is sort of indicate the polarity of the signal coming out of those respective outputs. So if you have the red LED going on over here, then your signal coming out from here is negative. If you have the plus LED lit, then the output is going to be positive. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because depending on what module you're sending to, it may or may not receive a negative voltage. Uh, most modules, for the most part, receive positive voltages, but not all of them will receive negative. Uh, just a little side note right there. Uh, so with that, that's kind of our brief little overview of the basics of this module. So for starters, what I'd like to do is just kind of do a simple example uh, similar to what they have in the, uh, in the manual where we just kind of get a basic idea uh, by combining a few sine waves. So I thought we would do that. Uh, let's get a sine wave going from the a147, and let's see, how am I going to do this? Actually, I'm going to need a special cable, which you guys have seen before, the stack cable variety, because I'm going to have to multiply this signal so I can go to my oscilloscope. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to pipe into there, and then I'm going to go just right into my maximum and minimum module. Now you can see that there is some activity going on right there. All right, and now I'm gonna take that same sine wave and I'm gonna pipe it over to my oscilloscope. 
And you should see some movement over there at my oscilloscope. I'm kind of zoomed in, so I might need to zoom out just a little bit so we can see our waveform a little more clearly. Might even have to adjust the frequency a little. See a nice little curve there. Let me see if I can bring the frequency up a little. There we go. It's a little more of a of a nice kind of sine wave that we're looking at. Okay, so that's our first waveform. We're gonna have to actually switch my uh, my oscilloscope into like the dual mode. There we go. Because we're gonna actually get a second sine wave going on here. So over at the A145, I'm gonna switch this over into low frequency mode. And I'm going to take my sine wave out from there as well. And then I'm going to pipe that into number two over here. And then I'm going to take that output and I'm going to pipe that into my oscilloscope as well. So let me see if I can get this, if this will reach. There we go. Not quite in all the way. Let me change my import. There we go. I think that might be a little bit too low there on my oscilloscope. If you take a look over there, be a little too slow. Let me see if I can speed it up a little bit, just so they're kind of overlapping. There we go. So now we have two sine waves going at two different frequencies, and you can see kind of what that looks like. I actually want to vary that just a little bit more, so I'm going to go back to my A145, and I'm just going to turn that up a little, so they're a little closer. Yeah. Well, that's a little bit. No, that's good. So you can see that they're a little bit different, and they're kind of overlapping. Um, now, let's see what the output is going to look like through the minimum maximum module, or the maximum minimum module, however you want to think about it. So I'm going to actually unpatch from my oscilloscope. And I'm gonna take this right here, I'm gonna unplug that, and then I'm gonna come out my maximum. And so that is the waveform that's being generated from my maximum module, or my maximum output. And you can see in some cases it is a normal sine wave, but then it has kind of a, a very strange shape to it that's being created by the second sine wave that's going into there. Okay, now let's take a look at the minimum output down at the bottom. So here we go, piping into the minimum. There we go. And there we can see on the oscilloscope, kind of a different shape. It kind of does something very similar in that, you know, you can see a sine wave for a moment, and then it kind of changes to a very jaggedy type waveform. So that's gonna be the minimum portion right there at the A172. Now we could kind of extend this if we wanted to, uh, maybe get another sine wave. For the moment right now, I wanted to kind of keep it simple. We're just doing kind of two sine waves right now. Um, in some of the upcoming segments, what I kind of have planned or in my head, and we might change this as we go along, because uh, there are a lot of interesting things that you can do with this module, um, is in the next segment, what I want to do is kind of compare uh, low frequency signals and then hear uh, what that is going to produce for us. Um, and then a little bit later, we'll see audio rate signals. Um, and then a little further down the road, we'll maybe combine the two so we can kind of hear and uh, possibly see uh, what that's actually going to do for us. So I hope that you found this useful. Um, we got some kind of interesting ground covered here with the maximum minimum module. Uh, so please stay tuned for the next segment of Raul's World of Sense and keep on patching out there.